um, one of the one of the things that I think we 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 gain by a steady, consistent yoga practice is this ability to um, embody our wisdom. That when we um, when we start to learn something or know something in the head, it's very different from knowing something in the body. Um, and reading about something or you know experiencing something from one perspective is very different than having the personal experience of an, uh, anything really anything you know what is a what does the breeze feel like you can read about what the breeze feels like but until you experience the breeze you really don't understand what a breeze is and so our practice is our time to experience um, and to integrate so much of what we're working with um, in our mind. So Latsu has some words about this that really don't have anything to do with yoga, but they have everything to do with yoga. Um, so this is from um, his, one of his books. It's not, not from the, the Tao. <clears throat> words can never, con sorry. Words can never convey the beauty of a tree. To understand it, you must see it with your own eyes. Language cannot capture the melody of a song. To understand it, you must hear it with your own ears. So it is with the Tao. The only way to understand it is to directly experience it. The subtle truth of the universe is unsayable and unthinkable. Therefore, the highest teachings are wordless. My own words are not the medicine, but a prescription, not the dis not the destination, but a map to help you reach it. When you get there, quiet your mind and close your mouth. Don't analyze the Tao. Strive instead to, strive instead to live it silently, undividedly with your whole harmonious being. So close your eyes and sit up straight and tall. Take a moment to seep in your own experience. How are you today? What is your energy? What's been playing over in your mind? How are your emotions? Just like we can't experience anything by reading about it, what does it feel like to just sit for a moment with stillness in the body, support, and feel the rhythm of your breath? Let the exhales be just a little longer, slowing down, calming the nervous system. Feel the broadness of your chest, the spaciousness in your torso and spine. The ease in your limbs. The steady flow of your breath. Place your palms together. Have a moment to offer an intention. How can your experience of your practice support your sense of well being, your sense of presence, so that you can attune to your experiences throughout the day? Go ahead and release the hands and come onto your back. So lie down, see what it feels like to have um, your limbs spread out a bit, to have that sense that you are at ease. There's space in all your joint spaces. Freedom. How is your breath when you're lying down? Is it easier? Is it different? Is it more challenging to breathe? 
And then when you're ready, let's start to move. So stretch your arms overhead and lengthen. Feel your side bodies grow and stretch. Can move around a little bit, extending one side a little bit more than the other, whatever feels good. And then bring the knees into the chest and give yourself a hug. Rock around a little bit, sway from side to side. Breathing deeply. All right, let's circle the knees. Okay, drawing them in um, uh, counter or clockwise or clockwise, whichever you did first, go the other direction. Check in, have the experience of feeling your body. So you know this development of our capacity to feel is such a beautiful thing about our practice. So try to embody as best as you can. Let the mind suspend and be a little bit more silent and let the body talk. Okay, listening with the mind. And let's open the knees. See what it feels like to spread your knees apart from each other and then swing them back in. So sorry, let me turn my ringer off. Breathing well. All right, and then let's put our feet back down onto the ground and windshield wiper your knees left and right. Feeling that sense of openness through the rib cage. All right, then stretch your limbs wide. Starfish open, wiggle your fingers and toes. And then when you're ready, squeeze in knees to chest. Open up a couple of times here, spreading your arms and legs wide, exhaling to draw your head up and your knees come in. One more time. Feeling the openness of the body, feeling the compression <clears throat> in the body. Put your head back down, right knee into your chest, left leg long on the floor, spine grows, wiggle your toes, roll your ankles, give a good squeeze and then switch, left knee in, right leg long, roll around. All right, and then two knees into the chest. Left, let, let's lift both legs straight up in the air, start to engage your core a little bit, you can always bend your knees if you need to. Feel the extension through the spine, the work of the core. Find your breath. And then bend your knees, keeping the core a little bit alive. Keep your ankles and your knees together. And we're going to rock a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. See if you can stabilize. This is to wake up your core a little bit, to wake up your obliques. So don't go very far over. Only go where you can resist with your core. Back to center. Keep breathing. Try not to let, um, you know, you want the, the cross angles of your core to be intact. So as your knees go right, navel turns left. As your knees go left, navel turns right. How's your breathing? All right, and then start push your body out one more time. Spread open your hip flexors, open your chest. Exhale, knees and roll over onto your side and come up <clears throat> onto your hands and knees. Actually, sit back on your heels for a moment. Just roll out your wrists. Give your um, wrists a little bit of energy. You can um, move them back and forth, open, close. Take our hands out to the sides and just flick our hands. For a moment, just waking up some of the muscles in our forearms, roll those wrists around again. And now let's go ahead and come onto our hands and our knees. Start moving through some cat-cows, finding your way. Arching and rounding the spine, taking your time. Notice the vertebrae, which ones move freely and easily, which ones might be a little bit more stubborn. And then settle your hips back toward the heels and stretch your arms out in front of you. Walk the hands as far forward as you can get them. Walk the fingertips, suck up the center of the palm, lift the underbelly of the arm. And then relax your shoulders a little bit more. Walk the hands over to one side of the mat. Feel the extension through your shoulder, your arm, your ribs, your waist. See if you can soften your tailbone and your sit bones down. And then inch over to the other side and feel the extension there. Drop weight, drop hips, relax your head. Deep breath in and away.
come back to center. Spread out the hands, curl your toes under, and let's come up to dog pose. While you're here, feel free to move your spine around, move your legs around, bend your knees, anything that feels good. So you can feel free to have a lot of mobility, movement. You don't have to be so still in the very beginning of your practice. Feel free to rock from one side to the other. You can move slowly or quickly or not at all. Let's have a little yielding into right hand and right foot, a little yielding into left hand and left foot, and then a yield into all four. Discover the breath, hug into the hands, drop them, draw them toward each other, keep the index finger mounds down and feel the length of your spine. And then walk forward, come into Uttanasana, bend your knees, bobble your head around. Halfway lift, the spine is growing. Rock around in your feet. You can bend one knee and then the other. And then exhale and melt again. Feel the hamstrings start to open a little bit more. Lift and widen the sit bones. Halfway lift again. You can always use your hands on blocks. If you want, stay up in an upright half lift posture. So you can always use furniture too if you want to be in a half lift higher. Okay, thigh bones move back, shin bones move forward. Feel the shoulder blades move down the back. The neck is soft. Spread out the bones of your feet. Feel the rooting into the earth and the rising up through the pelvis. See if you can feel that rebound of going in one direction down toward the earth and another direction up toward the sky. Let the backs of the knees stretch open a little bit without hyperextension. Lift and widen the sit bones. Feel the bottom of your feet spread out. The arches open up. And then exhale and bend your knees. Again, soften. Push off your feet. Rise up, bringing the arms to the sky. Open your breath. Lean back a little bit if it feels nice to do so. Spread open your wings. Squeeze your shoulder blades. And then exhale and bring your forearms to touch. Rise up again. Take a deep breath, release the hands down, shake your wrists around, see what kind of freedom you can get in your arms. And then we're gonna take our legs wide on the mat and start to swing. So you can have your arms down like this where they're just kind of very loose and relaxed. You can have your arms a little bit wider out to the sides. You can even have your arms lifting up in the air and you can play around with all three or any other variation you just want to open up the movement of your spine a little bit here. See if you can feel, even some cactus arms can feel nice. Oh, spreading out, whatever feels good. Just let the spine loosen. How is your breath? And then relax. Shake out your hands again. Get some energy moving down to your fingertips. Take a deep inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale and fold forward, coming down. Halfway lift, get your spine to grow, sit bones are widening, backs of the legs are wide and long. Release and melt back down. Let's go ahead and put our hands underneath our feet. So you need, might need to bend your knees a whole lot to do this. Okay, see if you can walk your hands so they're all the way under, so your toes get right to your wrists. Bend your knees as much as you need to, and then once you're there, Lift your spine a little bit, lengthen, lift your sit bones a little bit, and turn the eyes of the elbows forward. Go as deep into the posture as your body allows, and by deep I mean lengthening the backs of the legs and spine. And then relax and melt back down. Take the hands out, shake them out, step back to dog pose. Extending through your spine here. Feel the hamstrings open up. Let's pedal your feet very slowly. So one knee bends, the other heel stretches toward the floor, maybe even touches the floor. And then the other side. So getting the Achilles tendon to wake up and open up a little bit. Try not to overdo. So you know where your stretch point is and try not to exceed it, but come to the edge of it. And then let's release that. Come forward into a plank. Hold yourself steady. Heart is expanding forward. Push the floor away. Find that integrity of the center body. Breathing well. You can put your knees down first. 
to support yourself on the way down. This is often a safer variation for the shoulders than just coming down through Chaturanga. Take a deep breath, cobra pose or any variation of back bending that feels nice. Release and relax. Take your hands wide out in front of you. Lengthen through your spine. Stretch your legs. And then when your next exhale comes, relax and melt back down to the ground. Come up on tall fours. Swish and sway. Anything that feels good. Circle the pelvis a few times. Just let your low back start to warm. All right, hands root down. We're gonna lift our feet up off the ground and spin our feet left and right. So as your feet go left, let your head turn left. As your feet go right, let your head turn right. So just warming some of the back muscles. Deep breaths. All right, and then relax, inhale, lift your right arm up in the air. Exhale and slide that shoulder down to a twist. Feel your breath move through your body. And inhale and reach that arm all the way back up in the air again. Place the hand down, change sides, arm up. Exhale, slide arm through. Gaze toward the floor, deepen your breath. And then as you're ready, go ahead and lift that arm all the way up to the sky, hands down onto the ground. Either come to dog pose or if you're skipping a few dog poses here and there, this is a good one to skip. We're going to come into a lunge with our right foot forward. So either dog pose and bring your leg through or just come into a lunge. Extend through your spine. Put your blocks underneath your hands so that you have some height. You can be at whatever height you want them to be. And we're going to straighten and bend the front knee like we often do. When you do this, try to notice if you externally rotate your front leg a little bit when you begin to straighten it. See if you can keep it neutral as you begin to straighten. So widen the sit bones, a little inner spiral of your thigh as you straighten your leg. So back and forth. and then come to a lunge. When you're ready, rise up, bring your arms wherever is comfortable for your breath, for your shoulders, open yourself up. Maybe the arms come up in the air, maybe the arms come out, just be where you are, okay? How's the back knee? Do you need to melt it a little bit? Is it hyperextended? Can you feel the full stretch through your hip flexors? And then we're gonna twist right when you're ready. So wake up those obliques that we, we woke a little teeny bit when we were on our back, find them again. Reach the spine, create crown lifts, drop the shoulders. Come deeply into your lunge, find the breath. And then inhale, arms coming back up, place the hands down onto the ground, back foot comes forward. Fold in half, relax, let your neck soften. Inhale for a halfway lift, the spine is growing longer. The sit bones are wide and feel the hamstrings open again. Exhale and melt, folding back down. Step your other foot back, come to a lunge. Extend the spine here. The same thing, we're going to bend and straighten the front knee. See what it feels like to have a slight internal rotation of that front thigh. Are you breathing? As you do this, are you breathing? So remember, we're trying to just experience ourselves. There's no destinations or goals. I mean, you can have goals, but try not to have attachments to destinations and instead just be in, in the center of your experience. What are you feeling? What is the experience of what you're doing? All right, and then the next time you come around to a lunge, steady yourself. Rise back up, bring the arms wherever you are most comfortable being. So perhaps your hands, um, you know, if you're nursing a shoulder issue, maybe you don't want your arms overhead as much and you'd rather have your hands in a different place. Pay very close attention to what's supporting the movement of your breath. So if your arms 
come up and you feel like your breath lives just in this top chamber, make a different choice to expand your experience of breathing. And then when we're ready, we're going to twist to this side. So keep the hip, it's easy to hop the hip, hip out, hug the hip in, integrate your inner thighs to the midline, feel the growing spine. What is your experience here as you breathe? Do your shoulders resist the pose? Maybe you want to keep your hands on your hips so your shoulders are a little more relaxed. Okay. And come back around to center. Arms go up for a moment and release the hands down onto the ground. Back to dog pose. Extend the spine again. Any other choice if you're not liking dog poses? too much, then you can make different choices. Remember this practice is for you. Come forward into a plank and hold yourself steady. Let's turn our belly, our navel to the right. Keep your chest pointing the floor, back to center. Turn your pelvis, your belly to the left. Chest is facing the floor. Back to center one more time. Each direction, back to center. Stay grounded through your hands and then release back to center. Take your knees down and find yourself coming onto the floor. Take your arms back behind you. Perhaps you just lift your legs up. Perhaps you just lift your torso up. Perhaps everything lifts up. Stretch your arms back. Feel the shoulder blades release downward. Feel the core integrate. Engage your glutes. How's your breath? Exhale and melt and fold back down. Bring your left knee high up toward your chest. Sphinx your arms for a moment. Just come low all the way to the ground or just onto your forearms. Feel the good compression in your hip joint. And then let's open this up to a twist. Cactus your arm if you don't have room. Open your arm if you do have room. Let the knee leave the floor. Breathing in, breathing out. Coming back to center, bring your body down onto the ground again. Lift your right knee up high toward your armpit, either low with your torso or a little higher with your forearms on the ground. Compress into the hip. Feel space in your lumbar spine instead of falling in your lumbar spine. How's your breath? Stretch your arm overhead and twist open. If you get stuck like I am, just find your way. Let your knee leave the floor. Breathing into the open chest, the twist of the spine. All right, and then relax and come back round again. Come up onto all fours, find your way back up. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Swirl around here in your hips. And again, coming up to dog pose, lift your right leg in the air, push off your hands, extend, exhale, knee to nose. Use your core, inhale, bring that leg back. Exhale, foot comes forward. Shorten up your stance, grab some blocks. Parasvottanasana, okay. arms coming up. Maybe your arms stay on your hips, maybe your arms lift up or out. We're gonna go just a little bit forward. You can always take your feet wider left and right apart from each other. Feel the hamstrings work as you lean forward a little bit. So a little stretching, a little flexing in those hamstrings. Extend the spine, rise all the way back up. This time we're gonna bring our hands down onto the blocks, any height, square hips, inner spiral, the front leg, wide sit bones. So we're lifting the bottom of the tailbone up Feel the extension of the spine, root into the mound of your big toe as you reach the hip back. So getting a stretch, not only in your hamstrings, but in the outer hip a little bit. Great, and then we're gonna come back up. You can, you, can, you can stack blocks, like I just did one on top of the other. You can have no blocks, one block, whatever feels good for revolved triangle pose. Reach the arm up in the air, extend your body forward, bring your hand to rest down on the block or blocks. Adjust your feet. I like my foot a little further out to the side sometimes. Square hips, extend the spine, 
start to find your way into a revolved triangle pose. So it doesn't matter where you end up, just be where you are. Try not to let the hip hike out to the side. Keep the hip hike uh, moving in, inner spiral of the thighs. The most important thing you can do here is breathe. Stay rooted in the big toe as you reach the hip back. And then release your hands back down onto the ground. Back foot comes forward. Bend your knees a lot like we did in that first pose when we had our hands under our, our feet. See if you can kind of squat a little bit more. Let the back extend. And then halfway lift, rowing long. Let's go ahead and take the right foot back. The left foot is now forward, short stance, so not a lunge. Ground yourself, come on up. Let's do the active version of Parasvottanasana first. So the feet are moving into the earth. The sit bones are widening. So there's a little inner spiral of the thighs. Be really careful, this knee likes to hyperextend in this pose for some people. So have a little micro bend in there. Feel the work of the glutes and the hamstrings as you stretch your torso forward. Your arms can stretch back, your hands can be on your hips, wherever you want to be. Feel the work, you know, the hamstring, even though it's stretching, it's also got some work going on. How is the breath? How's your experience? Are you in your body? Let go of expectations, come back up. Arms can come to the sky if it feels nice, or arms can go back wherever you feel good. Bring your hands to rest on your blocks when you come down. And remember, you can stack one on top of the other on the inside of your foot if you need more height. Square hips, inner spiral. The, the very tip of your tailbone, reach it out behind you and slightly lift it up. So there's a little anterior tilt of the pelvis, so we're not rounding the spine. Feel the spine grow. Are there space, gaps in, your in between your vertebrae? Can you feel the discs? Go ahead and come up to stand one more time. Reaching the arms to the sky, hand, left hand stays on your hip, right hand stays up in the air, come forward. Once again, you can stack blocks higher if you need height underneath you. you know, having height can be very good for your spine. So if you come into revolved triangle pose and you feel trapped, you, know, you can't breathe, you can't twist, you can't, you're rounded, Get more height underneath you so they have the ability to extend the spine to find the twist. Remember, the obliques are what twist us, so they're woken up a little bit. Feel them do the work of the posture. Keep the hip hugged in, inner spiral thighs, the tip of your tailbone is lifting. Feel the growing length of the spine. Shoulder blades moving down away from the ears. The exhales can twist you. The exhales can engage your core. Are you rooting? Are you yielding? Do your feet feel grounded? All right, and then exhale and relax and come back down. Hands onto the ground. Dog pose, bend your knees a lot. Just let some of that um, tension across the sit bones go. And then come forward, put your knees down onto the ground. Cat cow. Finding breath. Okay, let's lie down on your back. We're getting back up, so don't, don't get so excited about being on soup pond just yet, but we'll be here for a bit. We're gonna bring our knees back in like we did in the beginning of class. A little work for our obliques here. Take your hands behind your head, elbows are wide. If you need to have your elbows up toward the sky, that's okay. So, you know, go where your shoulders are comfortable. But remember, we're not pulling our head with our hands, we're resting our head on the pillow of our hands. We're gonna keep the knees up for a moment and first just draw in. And then we're gonna put our feet down onto the ground. Lift your head, lift your shoulders, rest your head in your hands. Drop your right elbow toward your right hip. So the shoulder blade tips might be touching, but the rest of your shoulders are off the floor, back to center. And left elbow comes to left hip. So we're not down on the ground with our shoulders and head, we're up a little bit. And then just go back and forth, right to left. How is your breath? 
How is your breath? Can you stabilize as you do this? And then relax and melt your head back down. So now, you know, your obliques can side bend you and they can also twist you. So that was a little side bending. Now let's add a little twisting. Knees come up. We're going to open the arms out. So instead of using our shoulders to turn, we're going to use our legs to turn now. So with you can do this with straight legs. 100% you can do this with straight legs and bring your feet to your hand and up. But that's often quite challenging for people. So uh, another option is to bend your knees and bring your knees toward your elbows and back up and then switch sides. So I, you know, where do you like to inhale and exhale here? As long as you're breathing, that's the most important thing. Try not to let your knees come right up from your hips. You want to bring them high up toward your elbow. This will be protective for your back and make it so that you're not so um, your levers aren't as long, so your core support is a little bit more compact. All right, so breathe as you go. And it doesn't matter how far over to the sides you go. You don't have to bring your knees to the floor. You can go one inch off the midline if you want. So just find your obliques, find your breath. And then we're going to end on the left side, left knee drawing down and then come back up. And now the last thing that we're going to do is just a teeny bit of work for the transverse abdominis. So put your feet down onto the ground and we're going to open very slowly. Open your knees up out to the sides, super slow, and then bring your knees back to the midline. So you don't have to bring your knees to touch, just bring them back to over top of your feet and just very slowly opening your legs out and bringing your knees back in, trying to stay very stable in your core as you do this. Imagine your core is the tether for your knees, like a drawbridge opening out and a drawbridge lifting back up. You might notice that you have a lot more awareness or strength or stability on the left or the right more than the other side. So just notice, how's your neck? Relax. All right, and then release, bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit left and right. Okay. Roll over onto your right side. Bring your left hand to the top of your head. Knees are bent. We're going to inhale and lift your chest up a little bit and your feet off the floor. Exhale to come back down. Okay, so working with the um, quadratus lumborum, that deep side low back muscle, and the obliques. Can you integrate that side line of the body? One more, and then release and relax. Roll over onto your other side. Put your right hand on top of your head. Your knees are bent. Your feet are together, knees are together. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, lift your feet up and your chest up, and then inhale to come back down. Finding the sideline of the body, using your obliques and your quadratus lumborum to lift your feet and your head. How's your breath? Okay, let's do one more. And then when you're ready, lay on your back, starfish open your body. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, knees into your chest. Rock a little bit, perhaps you want your head up too. Just let your spine ease. And then we're going to roll over onto our side and come back up. Find all fours or dog pose you choose. Okay. Notice that there's a little bit more integrity in your center body. Do you have a little bit of stability? Okay. Let's come either from all fours into a plank or from dog pose into a plank. If you need support, try three-legged dog, okay, where you are three-legged plank so that 
you have a, a knee on the ground and the other legs in the air, kind of like bird dog without the hand. And then it switch sides if you are doing that. Integrate, find that center body. All right, let's go ahead and find your way to the ground. Support yourself. Pick a back bend that you like. I recently, I'm liking the arms down. It makes my shoulder happy. Find your breath. Back body support. Exhale and melt back down. Rest your head on your hands. Pick up your feet and rock left and right. Okay. Come back up onto all fours. Stretch back to child's pose for a moment. Let your back relax. Sometimes when we work with the obliques, you know, there's all, there's some movements in the spine, in the back body that can be a little intense. So stretch, open the spine. And then we're gonna come up onto our shins, okay? So um, with this posture, we're going to stay on our left knee, but I, it hurts my left knee to be on my left knee at the moment. So I'm going to take a blanket so that my kneecap is kind of hanging off of it a little bit. And I'm gonna bring my, um, you bring your right leg forward, we're on our left knee. So I like to have a little extra height underneath me. Sometimes I wish I had four blocks in this pose. If you have furniture nearby, you can hold furniture too. That's a great way to do this posture. So find your way up first. We're gonna twist. The tendency is to turn the foot out See if you can find that inner spiral. Draw the femur bone back, lift up through your chest. And then when you're ready, we're going to twist and open up into a twist. So find the breath, reach the arm in the air if you want. You can have one or two blocks or whatever you need underneath your left hand to help you extend the spine and find space for this posture. Maybe your hand comes up in the air, maybe your hand is down onto the ground. Notice if your hip heights out to the side, drop the hip down and in. Try to keep that foot from externally rotating. How's the breath? Okay. All right, and then release and come out of the pose. Find your breath. Let's come to the other side. Shin down on the ground, stretch your foot forward. If you need different choices, you know, if you can't be on your knee at all, you can do this pose very simply by standing up and putting your foot on the surface and doing the twist with your body in a standing position. Don't do what I just did and push your hip forward. Make sure you're standing with your pelvis over your foot and twist. Okay, so you do you, whatever way your body can feel most supported, protected, available movement potential. So lift up through your spine. Feel the half on the muscle in the first. Draw the sit bone down and back. Inner spiral of the thigh. And then as you're ready, let's twist. So your hands can be on blocks. Open up. Maybe your arm comes open in the air. Maybe your hand comes on your hip. Inner spiral. Tailbone. Tip of the tailbone just slightly lifts up and back. So there you're in an anterior tilt of the pelvis. Try to not push the hip out. Keep the hip hiking down and in, reach the spine, stretch through the big toe and the inner heel. Keep the po toes pointing straight up. Be mindful to not hyperextend the knee. How's your experience? How's your breath? All right, and then come out of the pose and find your way back onto all fours again. Enjoy. Swirl around your spine, swish and sway. Let's take the right leg straight back behind you, left arm out in front of you, bird dog. Deep breaths in, extend, core engaged. Exhale, elbow and knee come in. Inhale, bring it on out. Now we're gonna bring our knee and our elbow out to the side. Inhale, bring it back. Place that hand and knee down onto the ground. Change your sides. Stretch the left leg back behind you, right arm out in front of you. How is the wrist on the ground? If you took a class earlier in the week on the wrist, are you able to ground all four mounds? Can you lift under the center of the palm? Can you lift under the center of the wrist, that little channel? If 
Find the breath. On your next exhale, in you go, elbow and knee. Inhale, bring it out. Exhale, out to the sides, cactus knee and elbow. Use your core. Inhale, bring it back. Exhale, bring it on down. Child's pose. Rest your hips back. If child's pose is in a nice, relaxing pose, choose something different. Go ahead and find our way up. Either come through dog pose to walk forward or just walk forward, whichever feels good. Shake out your wrists, feel Tadasana. Breathing in, breathing out. What's your experience here? Can you yield into the floor? We're gonna stand on our right foot and lift and tip. Extend to your starfish, tipping a little bit to the side. Lots of work in both outer hips, but engage the side waists as well. Feel your obliques help to support you. Extend through your hands. How's your breath? And then come back, bend your knees and come up to the other side. I tip just a little bit to a place where you can stay and you're not gonna fall over. Deep work in the outer hips. Extend through your spine, open the breath, use your core. And then relax, two feet onto the ground, arms up, exhale, arms down, shake them, touch your toes, come into chair pose. Symmetry, enjoy this posture. So put your arms anywhere. The support of your core, Breathing well, okay. and then rise up, lean back a little bit, cactus open your chest and release your arms down. Find your breathing. So hopefully you're awake in your core and in your pelvis a little bit, in your hips, ground yourself, yield. So let your feet be rooting, let your knees soften, let your breath travel in your body. Simple stork pose, just bring your knee up, left knee up, stand on your right foot, put your arms anywhere you want them to be. We're not going anywhere, we're just here. We're just here, seeing what it feels like to ground into one foot. And then place your other foot down. Let the balanced postures be a way for you to connect with the experience of the moment. If we're racing around, sometimes balance poses allow us to just slow down. The silence is accurate here. So feel the silence in your body. Some part of you that's still, even if it's not your joints or your bones, is there a stillness in the space between your eyes? and relax, reaching the arms up, find your breath, exhale and float back down. Halfway lift, the spine is growing taller and longer, exhale and melt. Step sideways on your mat and go long, keep your hands down for a moment. Maybe your hands need to come on blocks and that's fine for some width, whatever feels good. Finding your breath, let your body rest downward. All right, and then come on up, wide-legged stance. Turn your feet slightly out, both of them. Take your hands behind your head, open up the chest, okay? And we're gonna come down to a goddess pose with our torso upright like this. Now remember, we're not pulling on our head. So if this is difficult, if you feel like you can't be upright, take your hands away and cactus them instead, whichever is more um, stable for your body. We're gonna tip our teapot over to the side, either hands clasped or hands open. Come back to center, tip your teapot to the other side. 
ground your feet, spread open the bones of your feet and feel them root up. Let's go each side one more time. Over to the side, are you breathing? Come back up. All right, and then find some openness. Spread out your limbs, straight legs, turn your feet forward and come to rest down. Relax your head, deep breath in. Melt your exhales. Be present for your experience. Okay, the last pass through of vinyasa, if you want, you can skip it and just come down to the ground or you can come back to the front of your mat for one more pass through of vinyasa. So lengthen through dog pose. Feel your experience, rest your eyes. Inhale, come forward into a plank. Put your knees down if you need to, up dog, cobra pose, any kind of pose. And relax. Come on, tall force. Switch your spine around. And then we're going to come on to our back. Everybody onto your back. Pause here for a moment. Stretch your legs. Imagine a mini shavat. We're not quite there. We're almost there. We're not quite in shavasana, but have a moment here of letting your limbs rest down. Sometimes when we have less activity of focus, like do this, do that in the mind, we have a little more capacity to feel. The goal in our practice is to be able to do both, to be able to be within activity and be sensing and present and aware and feeling all at the same time. So can you have a back seat driver and a front seat driver simultaneously where you're acting and uh, observing simultaneously? All right, let's go ahead and find a variation of the hip stretch that is your favorite. So maybe you wanna flip back over and do pigeon pose. Maybe reverse pigeon pose is something you love. Maybe thigh over thigh is what you love. Maybe um, sitting up and doing fire log is what you love. Okay, so choose a pathway that's gonna help you open the hips a little bit. So finding the breath, it doesn't matter which pose you're choosing, just find something that's good for your body. Um, deeper is not better, harder is not better, easier is not better. Uh, you know, what's better is what your intuition is telling you your body needs right now. So find the pathway that's right for you and then experience what you're feeling. Let your body breathe. Make sure you're resting somewhere, you're, there's ease. Find our way to the other side. If you are comfortable, repeat the same pose on the other side. But maybe you have total asymmetry going on. You know, if your knee was just replaced, or if you have um, an injury or condition going on where you have one knee that's a little vulnerable or one hip, choose anything that the side needs, even if it's not the same as what the what the pose just was on the other side. But if you can choose symmetry, choose symmetry. Finding the breath, any support that's needed, take it. Feeling the spine grow, have any support. So if you're in pigeon pose, you can put a block under your head, if on your back, rest your head down on the ground. Feel your heavy parts surrender, your, your legs, your arms, your head, your spine. Thank <laughs> you. 
when you're ready, find your way um, into a seat, a comfortable seat. Breathing well. And support yourself. Be up on the edge of a blanket. If you can sit cross-legged, great. If not, there's always a plan B. We're just going to do a simple twist, a simple seated twist. And see if you can use, so if you can't have your knees bent, try this twist where you're um, twisting, you can cross your leg over or not, and you can twist with your legs like this. But if you can sit cross-legged, sit cross-legged. And then notice, where are you twisting from? Are you using your arms to do the twisting? Can you use your obliques? Can you have that final bit of awareness in the center body where the breath twists you over and the core twists you over? Your spine is so warmed up for the mobility required for this. Feel the crown grow. And then come back to center and change sides. You can lift your arm up first to get some length in the spine. I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but do you always sit the same cross-legged? Perhaps sometime when you do a twist like this, you should try sitting the, um, you could, not should, but you could try sitting with your legs crossed the way you're not familiar with. How's your breath? Great, and then come back to center. Come to lie down on your back. Bring your knees into your chest and rock a little bit left and right. Okay, you have a couple of minutes, like two minutes before we lay down for Shavasana. What do you want to do? So if you, you know what? I encourage you always to get onto your mat and explore your practice without someone guiding you. Um, and so here's a couple minutes of me not guiding you to telling you, okay, we're going to do this pose now, this pose now. What is your body guiding you to, to do? What, are, what do you need? What would feel really good in your body right now? So whatever that posture is, I'm not even going to throw out suggestions. Just let your body tell you. It doesn't matter what you're choosing, make sure you're breathing. you're ready there's no rush if you're you have done something that has two sides make sure you you've started the other side and then whatever whenever you are ready to find your way into shavasana and this is just our gift this you know resting posture we do at the end of our practice is a gift it's where we um, really learn to incorporate, to integrate, to absorb our practice, and to practice the art of being present for sensation, for experience, without the, the need to do anything. So we get to just be. So as you find your way, take your time, whatever you're choosing to do, your, your practice is your own. You can keep doing yoga for another half hour if you want, or four hours, um, anything that's, you don't have to always listen to me. Okay, so this is the joy of doing yoga at your house. But if you are ready for Shavasana, just feel yourself melt. The limbs can be um, heavy, let them be heavy. See what it feels like to have the sense of softness come into your belly. Feeling your breath. Letting the base of your skull melt.
Keep focus on the breath. Let's begin to deepen our breathing again. Find any movement that suits you. Take your time to find your way onto your side and come upright to sit. Is your mind a little quieter? Do you have a sense of experiencing yourself beyond just the to-do list or constant thinking? 
Are you aware of things about you, the temperature of the room, the feeling of your clothes on your skin, any sounds you, you hear? And let's bring this awareness and this presence into a centered place, palms together at your heart. And let's offer the gift of our practice, share your energy like a prayer, send it forth to another. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.